In this chapter, we're going to change gears a little bit and revisit some of the concepts that we learned earlier in the year. One of those is the concept of a theory, and the theory that we are going to focus on is called the kinetic molecular theory, which helps us to explain why solids, liquids, and gases behave in the way that they do. The kinetic molecular theory has several basic tenets that apply to all states of matter. The first is that matter is made of particles, and these particles can be atoms or molecules. The second basic tenet is the volume the individual particles occupy is negligible when compared to the space in between the particles. In other words, you can tell if something is a solid, liquid, or gas not based on the size of the individual particles, but based on the amount of space between the particles. For an example, in an ideal gas, the particles are very, very far apart, so most of the volume of any ideal gas is empty space. You can see at the picture at the bottom, on the far left is a solid where the particles are very close together. The middle shows a liquid where there is a very small amount of space between the particles. And then on the right is a large flask containing a gas where there's a significant distance between each of the particles. The term ideal gas is important when you're discussing the kinetic molecular theory because an ideal gas meets all of the different tenets or principles of the kinetic molecular theory. The third tenet states that particles of matter are always in motion, and because they're always in motion, they have kinetic energy. Again, I'll use a gas as an example. And in an ideal gas, the particles of the gas are constantly moving. And not only is their motion constant, but within a closed container, the motion of the particles is completely random. Because the particles are constantly moving, they have a significant amount of kinetic energy. And that kinetic energy is large enough to overcome the attractive forces between the molecules. Remember that there were different types of attractive forces between molecules. They were also called intermolecular forces, such as hydrogen bonding, dipole-dipole, and London dispersion forces. In the diagram of the water molecules on the right, there are dotted lines between the water molecules that represent the intermolecular force between each particle. In water, these are called hydrogen bonds. And if you had liquid water, the strength of those hydrogen bonds is significant, causing the molecules to be much closer together. But as you heat up the water, the kinetic energy begins to increase, and eventually the kinetic energy overcomes those attractive forces, and the particles can get very far apart from each other, and so the intermolecular forces become negligible. So the particles of any ideal gas are described as having no attractive forces between them. The fourth tenet of the kinetic molecular theory is that collisions between particles are considered elastic. Now, for those of you that have taken physics, you should be familiar with the term elastic collision. For those of you who haven't, an elastic collision is one in which the amount of kinetic energy does not change before compared to after the collision. So there's no net loss of kinetic energy as long as the temperature remains constant. The diagram at the bottom of the page shows a couple examples. In the box labeled A, the yellow particle is at rest and the green particle is moving towards it. And then they collide, and after the collision, the green ball is at rest, and the yellow one is moving at the same speed the green one was moving initially. So all of the kinetic energy was transferred from the green ball to the yellow one. In the box labeled B, you have two particles that are moving towards each other at the same speed. Then they collide, and they will move away from each other at the same speed. So the total amount of kinetic energy before the collision is the same as the amount of kinetic energy afterwards. The last basic tenet of the kinetic molecular theory is that the kinetic energy of the particles is directly proportional to their Kelvin temperature. Now Kelvin temperature is just a different temperature scale than say the Fahrenheit scale or the Celsius scale. In other words, particles that are at the same temperature will have the same amount of kinetic energy. The equation used to calculate kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared, where the amount of kinetic energy is directly proportional to the mass and velocity of the particles. This relationship is shown in the picture on the right. In the container on the left-hand side that is labeled before, the particles are at a cooler temperature. Because they're at a cooler temperature, they're moving around slower and therefore have less kinetic energy. If I add heat to the ideal gas that's in this container, then the particles begin moving around faster, 
Because they're moving around faster, their amount of kinetic energy increases, and therefore the temperature of the box will also increase. Remember that theories help us to explain why something in nature occurs. And the kinetic molecular theory allows us to explain why solids, liquids, and gases behave the way they do. Each of the different properties of solids, liquids, and gases can be explained using this kinetic molecular theory. For example, in gases, they expand to completely fill any enclosed container that they occupy. This expansion is due to the fact that the particles are in constant motion and that there's no significant attraction between the individual particles. And that allows gases to have no definite shape and no definite volume. Although you normally associate liquids as fluids, gases are also considered fluids because the particles can move past each other easily. In terms of the kinetic molecular theory, this is due to the insignificant attractive forces or intermolecular forces between the particles of an ideal gas. Gases also have a very low density compared to their solid or liquid form. In fact, the density of a gas is usually one one thousandth that of its solid or liquid form. The reason this is is because the particles are very, very far apart. This causes the mass to be relatively small compared to its large volume. Gases are also able to be compressed. In terms of the kinetic molecular theory, when you compress a gas, you're taking particles that were originally very far apart and you're pushing them closer together. This is really only possible with a gas because there's such a large distance between the particles in the first place. The particles of solids and liquids are much closer together and cannot easily be compressed. Gases regularly undergo diffusion, which is a spontaneous process in which particles of two different substances mix together. When diffusion occurs, the particles always move from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. And so you can see that before diffusion, the red particles are clustered together at the bottom of the picture. And then after diffusion, the red particles have spread apart from each other. This diffusion is caused by the random motion of the particles and the fact that there's a large amount of empty space between the particles, allowing the two gas particles to mix together. Another process common to gases is called effusion. Effusion is sort of like diffusion, except that the gas particles are passing through a tiny opening. And so you can see in the cylinder to the right-hand side, we have a bunch of gas particles moving around in the top half of the cylinder, and then there's a tiny hole in the disk in the middle that gas particles will slowly pass through. That process is called a fusion. But it only occurs because the particle motion is constant and random. If the particles weren't moving, then a fusion would not happen. The speed of these two processes depends not only on the temperature of the gas, but also the mass of the particles. A gas that is warm will have particles that are moving around quickly, and so diffusion and effusion will happen faster. If you have a gas that's cold, then the particles will be moving around slowly, and diffusion and effusion will happen slower. This is due to the direct relationship between temperature and kinetic energy. But remember that kinetic energy is not only dependent on the speed of the particles, but also their mass. We find that gases that are heavy undergo effusion much slower than gases that are lightweight at the same temperature. Those lighter weight gases have to move around faster in order to have the same amount of kinetic energy as the heavy gas particles do. In most cases, all matter that is in the gas phase will behave like an ideal gas. But under certain circumstances, gases will begin to deviate from those principles. And so a real gas is defined as a gas that does not completely behave according to the kinetic molecular theory. However, this is often only noticed under very high pressures and very low temperatures. When a gas is under very high pressures, the particles are going to be very, very close together. Or when the gas is at a very low temperature, the particles are going to be moving very slowly. In both of these instances, the close proximity of the particles or the slow movement of the particles allows those attractive forces to no longer be negligible. We also find that the more polar the gas molecule is, the more it's going to deviate from the behaviors of an ideal gas.
So a molecule of hydrogen, which is nonpolar, or a particle of helium gas, which is also nonpolar, behave more like an ideal gas than, say, a molecule of water. A molecule of water in the gas state at high pressures or at low temperatures will tend to deviate from those ideal gas behaviors because of their stronger intermolecular forces.